Hi, everybody. Welcome to Randy Sands and Cracking the Spiritual Code. Tonight is June 29th, 2020. And I believe this is our 15th episode. And tonight's topic is on uh, spiritual work with herbs, how to integrate them, if that's what somebody should choose to do. And before we jump right in, I'd like to introduce the crew. First, we have Michelle, wave. Hello. We have Leanne. And we have our special guest tonight, which is Onyx from Strange Brew. Woohoo! <laughs> and if you guys find this uh, content valuable, we encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell. And that way you'll stay informed of upcoming content. And also, if there's anybody you know that would find value, please you know, share it with them. Feel free. It's all about helping each other along our spiritual journeys, right? Yes. Right? We don't need to, to just keep information to ourselves. We like to share it. So, Onyx, before we get started, the one thing that really um, struck me when I was learning more about herbs is the confusion. And, well, there's confusion in a few areas. But what was the difference between herbs and spices? And it took me a long time to figure it out. So before we get started, I'm going to kind of get into that a little bit. Herbs come from the leafy green part of the plant where somebody, can you guys all mute yourselves really quickly for a second? Somebody's got feedback. Where spices can come from the roots, the bark, pods, you know, any other part of the plant. So with that, I'm going to kind of open this up. And we do have a lot of questions that came in, Onyx. So... Okay. What we'll do is I gave the crew the questions that came in so they can kind of start throwing them out. And if anybody else has any questions, they can throw them out. There you go. I was pointing and, at the whole thing. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I knew I had to unmute you. All right, so Leanne, do you want to I, start off? I do, I do. Um, oh, actually, the... actually one more thing. Um, one thing that we aren't going to do is we are not going to get into medicinal uses and we're not going to get into things like teas and pastes, things like that. There's enough information online and, um, you know, there's some states where you just can't do that. So we're going to be very careful in that regard. Okay. So my, the very first question I have is, is really just what is the purpose of using herbs? What's the, what's the purpose of them? It's for me, it's a focal point. So the people who come in, they look for certain attributes of each plant and they incorporate that into their magical use. So they don't have to think about that portion of the spell or the working or the manifestation that they're doing because the plant material is going to do it for them. Okay, that makes total sense. Michelle, I think you're muted. Um, I'm unmuting her now. Yes, thank you. Dude. I was muted. Um. Okay, so like, how how do you use herbs in your in your sp spells or manifestations or? <laughs> okay, if it's thing that somebody wants to work on long term, they would carry it. For example, if it's something that they want to send out as a quick manifestation, they'll burn it. Like you could burn it on a charcoal disc in a cauldron. Cauldrons are fun. Um, but it, and first of all, if you write your own spells, you could write it in the way you want. But if you're found there, she goes, yep, Randy's got her cauldron. Um, but some spells recommend, if you're getting them out of a book, for example, that you burn them on a charcoal, you could sprinkle them, you could crush them. And I find that crushing them with the mortar and pestle 
really puts a lot of your own energy into it. So it's really like a meditative state while you're doing it. Okay. And I, I mean, obviously I know you own, uh, you know, a strange brew, but um, where do you go to find these kind of things? Do we, should we seek, seek out like, you know, a specialty store like yours or where do you go to find some of these herbs? People can harvest them in the wild themselves. That's called wild crafting. There's her charcoal disc. Randy's got it all set up. You're ready. Um, I, I will caution you though. I have a customer that got pulled over in the park because <laughs> <laughs> somebody, saw, somebody saw him with a a bowling it's a curved knife and a bag and they thought it was a man running through the park with a weapon oh my once the police stopped him and saw that he had herbs in his bag and he explained what he was doing there's a lot of the herbs you can find out in the wild it's the you have to have a lot of patience to learn how to dry them properly if you're using them for an oil or you can find a shop like mine and buy them already dried so and let me tell you another story. I do not suggest that anybody burn sage out in public. Why? Well, I know somebody that had bought, you know, the, the, the I don't know, the sticks, the sage sticks, mm -hmm. and they were out in the Everglades burning it. And a, a lovely officer came and arrested her for marijuana issues. And he even took the sage stick. He even took the package it came in. A few months went by and they went to her job and arrested her because they did testing and they said it was close enough to mar marijuana. That she ended, she beat it, of course, but it was, it was not a good experience for her. That's why I label our, our bags in case somebody gets pulled over. I put the herb name and I put our store. Oh, that she had all that. It didn't matter. Wow. Huh. Wow. All right. Dang. Yeah, right. I thought you were going to say because it smells like weed because sometimes people think it does smell like weed. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently it did and he arrested her. He was just a lovely human being, you know. She had like package, she had everything. <laughs> Who's nice. next? So what what if these what if it's a hard to find kind of herb? Um usually a store like mine and myself included, we could get it for you. I would tell you, and that was a good question that came in. I would tell you Strange Brew, which is Kenmore, New York. And there's also the cauldron, which is in Deland, Florida. Both stores are absolutely amazing. Thank you. Awesome. So now we know a little bit about herbs, but can we talk about, um, for example, what kind of herbs are good for, for cleansing? Cleansing sage is good. Um, Palo Santo is a wood that mm -hmm. falls under the category for me. I sell it in the herb category. Um, those are really good for cleansing. The sage is good for light, regular cleansing, and the Palo Santo is good for the heavy stuff. Okay. I those love it. Two I use. Yeah. yeah everything that we need, Randy. We're gonna... <laughs> Do you oh, have any for annoying children? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got a smudge fan, too. <laughs> Bedroom herb. They hate it. <laughs> children. <laughs> Children just making me eat raw onions. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> um, so since we are, are um, in, in mediumship classes, uh, what would you recommend would be a good herb for opening up for mediumship or psychic? I like juniper berry for that to open up your channels. and. You know, I tell people we have the labels on all the jars with the attributes for each herb. But if you're drawn to an herb for something, it doesn't matter what the label says. If you're drawn to it, use it for the purpose that you feel. So kind of like a crystal, you know, when you're pulled to a certain. Um, now, how would you say to, to um, I know you mentioned burning them, but um, would is that what you would do is then burn the juniper berry or what would you do with it? Berry, like. I, I read tarot and if I go to a party, I put my cards in my bag, but I would put some juniper berry in the bag with them because you really can't burn at other people's houses unless they 
explicitly tell you that you can. But if it were something I were doing at home or something at the office, I would bring it in the cauldron. Okay. And at home, I get these candles at the dollar store. Yeah. And I'll put cinnamon oil and clove oil. Good. You know, right inside, and I'll light it. Yeah. Have yeah, you used a toothpick to put holes in those? Like no, you, but I will now. Or when you get your porcupine. <laughs> I will now. <laughs> Just a couple drops. Go about like halfway down the candle and put like different depths with your porcupine quill. And then drop like one or two drops in it because it makes it smell the whole way through. Well, I will as soon as I get it. My okay. husband's going to love this week's grocery list because it has porcupine quill and cauldron on it so far and juniper berry. He's going to be like, where am I going? What am I doing here? Right? <laughs> I love it. Wait until you walk into the store. I can't wait. I'm going. She'll see me coming. <laughs> All right. So, Michelle, you, is it your turn? You, I know. No, I think she done. just went, I think. I think but, it's your turn. Oh, yes, you did. That's right. I stole your question. I'm sorry. So how about um, a, a good herb to, um, you know, for, for being psychic to, to expand your consciousness? What would you recommend there? For myself, personally, I like mother's wort. Mother's wort is really good for that for me. Okay. Um, I do want to say mandrake is an excellent all-purpose herb. If you can't decide on something, you could use the mandrake for just about everything. Okay. You know mandrake what I... Documented or used in magic. So it's excellent. What do you think about Bodhi? About what? Bodhi. Bodhi. B-O-D-H-I. Bodhi. You know what? I've never used it. Somebody just asked me to order it for them a couple weeks ago, and I haven't gotten it in yet because of all the COVID stuff. Everybody's sh shipping slow, so I haven't used it yet. What have you used it for? For that. Um, oh. I, I also make um, mala beads that, you know, custom mala beads. Okay. And I have a set right here that's out of Bodhi. Okay. Maybe that's what lady is doing with it because she asked me for two ounces I think so, well no these, we are, these are these are whole seeds okay well yeah but I'd weigh them so she asked for a weight. oh I see what you're saying yeah oh that's a lot more than <laughs> that's a few pounds right there wow <laughs> maybe that's not what she's doing with them Woohoo! who knows I don't know I'll google it later yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> oh, Michelle, Michelle you're muted, up. Huh? How did she get muted? I don't know. The dog was barking. Oh, oh, yeah. Um. Okay. So then, what would you recommend? Um. For calling in spirit. We have over 300 herbs here, I'm thinking. <laughs> Calling in spirits. I mean, honestly, I like the sage for the seances. When we do the seances, I use the sage on the table. Is there a certain kind of sage that you prefer? California white sage, and I do want to say something. The smudge sticks. Mm -hmm. There was a Native American woman that came in here a couple of years ago, and she said the smudge sticks are disrespectful to use the whole leaf instead. Because what you're doing is you're wasting it. And I've done it myself before she talked to me about it when you're putting it out like that you're crushing it to get it to go out and it's hard to reuse like you relight it and you have to cut it so even if you have a smudge stick you can pull it apart and just use what you need instead of lighting it and over burning it and just that's that's I'm, what i do that's good to know i didn't know that stick. if it looks too charred I used to not relight it, and I just set it aside and never use it again. So, I mean, it's, but the California white sage is what we use. I think I've got some in my tray here. Yep. 
if I want, I just, can I show you guys something real quick? Of course you can. This one little leaf, this is a leaf of California white sage. If you light it, you're gonna see how much smoke you get out of it. I mean, that's a lot of smoke for a little leaf. Yeah. Like, people don't think they're gonna, if I hold this out of camera range, you wouldn't know if I was using a smudge stick or one leaf. Right. Excuse you me, know? you're short on, on sage right now. I heard from, from uh, your mannequins the other day. <laughs> no, I got two people put in. It just came in on Sunday. She calls her workers the mannequins. The mannequins, love it. <laughs> um, and you know what? I like to mix the white with the blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know oh. why. I I've just, I, um, I used to use primarily the white sage. Uh, I, you know, a lot of you know that I was partially raised by a Native American Indian. She was 100% Chippewa. And so white what? sage is something that I was, you know, raised around. And yeah. I forget where I was. I, th I want to say it was in upstate New York and I got some blue sage. And one day I was running a little short, so I mixed the two and I really liked it. So a lot of times when I have both, I always have the white, but when I have both, I'll mix a little. I'll just take a little bit off the stick of the white and then I'll throw a little bit of the blue in there and, uh, you know, go to town. I like it. That's, that's and also when I, <clears throat> when I was still carrying the smudge sticks, I started opening mine up and I, if there was, I send some back. They had a real wet growing season like one or two years ago and it was causing mold on the inside. So when you get the smudge sticks, always open them just to see, to make sure you're not burning something black and moldy. You know, and I, it, it's interesting because that's the first I've heard of breaking apart the sage stick and doing it that way. But we've done a lot of in investigations, our team has uh, over the years, especially up towards Buffalo. Um, where there's a lot of, of Indian burial ground and here we are burning sage. And of course now it's standing out, out in my mind. I'm thinking, great, we're probably pissing them off because we're, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, it's one of those things like, you know, if you don't, you don't want to offend somebody, you know? So note well, to that, self. That's why she educated me on it because she noticed that we were moving a lot of the sage sticks instead of the loose. So yeah. I was really great for her giving me a heads up on that. That's and... wonderful to know. And Bridget said that she read that sage is also running low through the country because it's being over harvested. And you know what? I wouldn't doubt that for a second. Yeah. I Especially wouldn't doubt it. Not with the way 2020 is going. <laughs> Everybody's burning it. <laughs> well, even just in general, because you know what? More and more people are learning about spiritual things mm -hmm. and it's, each year it becomes more and more and more common knowledge. So more people are buying it. So, Absolutely. you know, there's gonna come a point in time, I'm sure it's already happened, but there's gonna come a point in time where they're gonna have to have actual farms to grow it because there's just gonna be so many people using it that it's yeah. gonna be problematic. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about, um, you know, if we wanted to open up our mediumship, you recommended juniper berry, but if, um, what if you want, say we wanted help with, with meditation, um, what would be a good choice for, you know, to use for that? Be, Lavender is very calming. So any yeah. other calming to you, lavender is excellent. Lavender's what do you think, somebody had mentioned this one to me once and I've never used it. Um, I don't even know that I've seen it and I don't even know that I can pronounce it, but it was called go, go to cola, go to oh, cola. Yeah. That here. Yeah. Is go that one a good one? Yeah. That's an excellent one. Go to cola is excellent. And, and there was cola in it. I'm hooked. <laughs> I love it. I love soda pop. <laughs> it's a uh, sarsaparilla. Smells like root beer. It's so good. Oh, could you put could you put some of that on my list, please? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I open the jar and I just smell it. <laughs> ah, I'll be getting yeah. some of that. <laughs> Add that to the shopping list. 
by the time she gets off this this recording, her husband is gonna oh, ring her. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Michelle, you're up. Okay, if someone wanted to manifest more love into their life, what would be good? Now, more did love. they did they specify what kind of love, like love in general, or like a love relationship? No specifications. Okay, you get to go to town, Onyx. Well, rose is good. Like, we have uh, red rose buds. We have the red rose leaves. But also, I'm going to go back to the self-love, and I'm going to go back to mother's work for that. For some reason, I'm stuck on mother's work tonight. But self-love, I'd recommend the mother's work. Eyebright is good for that, too. And, um, roses is good for romantic love, relationship kinds of things. Um, trying to think what else. What about mistletoe? <laughs> mistletoe is good, but it's toxic to animals. So careful oh. with it around the house. Well, that's good for us to know. Point right? out, point <laughs> out, mistletoe are very toxic to cats, especially. Who else? Who, what, what else? Mistletoe and um, I just said it. I lost it. Uh, poinsettia. Oh, that's good a, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, the wife's not getting any more of those darn things in, in, at the holiday time, let me tell you. They're beautiful, but your cat gets hold of it, they're done. Yeah, yeah. no, uh-uh, we don't need that. <laughs> um, what about, I, I've also heard that spearmint was good for love. Spearmint's good for love for women. Cinnamon is good for love for men. Oh, oh. man, okay. I I constantly I love essential oils I love eating like the scentsy crap I have apple cinnamon all the time I'm gonna switch that out. <laughs> I, if you're using the oils, be careful putting them on your skin. Always put a carrier oil in with them. Yep. How about for uh, manifesting peace and harmony? I We're like picking Ash your brain tonight, aren't we? <laughs> ashwagandha for that. That's that's kind of on the. Not a lot of people buy that, but I really like it. Um, for peace and harmony. What about morning glory and gardenia? I like those. Gardenia is a little bit too flowery for me for that, but if people like it, then they could use it for that. Okay. They always like, we don't allow people to put fingers in the jars. I will open the jars for people to get a smell if it's woodsy or, you know, Patchouli's good for peace too. We just had somebody enter, so I just want to make sure that everybody knows we're being recorded. Um, okay. All right. And what else was next? Um, the patchouli is good for you said for peace and like overall well-being. Yeah, just the harmony in general. Yeah, I like the patchouli for that too. Patchouli. That's a okay. And I think we're getting close to the end of the questions that were sent in to me. So everybody can very shortly just jump in and um, use chat, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, Tammy said Nag Champa. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. We, it's an incense here. It's really nice. It smells like ice. I burn it here all day long. Everything here smells like Nag Champa. You know, mm -hmm. my wife loves it, and I am, I am hooked on this one. In the temple, is that what it says? Yes, yes. I am absolutely uh, hooked on this. We, oh yeah. What's that one geared for, Randy? Uh, you know. <laughs> It's really good for meditation. And good I for believe... dealing with your annoying mediumship students? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you guys can wear my nerves every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> no, weird. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe, um, I believe the name isn't just a namesake. I believe that they actually use that in the temples in India. Oh. Okay. Okay, so what's next, guys? Michelle's up. And I'm looking forward to your answer to this question. See if it's what I've been using. You gotta unmute Michelle though. Oh, she keeps muting herself, those dogs. 
Do we need to communicate with those dogs and talk and, and uh, have Keep a conversation? Yeah. Right. Okay, what about blocking bad energy? Blocking bad energy. Mm. I like the devil's claw or devil's shoestring. I'm sorry, devil's shoestring mm -hmm. and rake for that too. And what, I'm sorry? Mandrake. Mandrake. Bridget said, and I think this is going back to the last one. She said, John loves to recommend Penny Royal for peace. Oh, okay. Penny Royal is good. Penny Royal is actually also a protective herb, too, so. Good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What, what about... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what about things like African violet, nettle, um, nettle, bay, and cedar? Nettle is very protective, especially for women. If you get the stinging nettle, stinging nettle is very protective for the feminine divine. Um, well, it's it not very friendly if you touch it. Let me tell you why it's still on the plant. Yes. No. The you know what I used to do, you guys? I used to get sent to summer camp all the time. And in California, up in, up in the mountains there, there's plenty of it. And every Sunday, they would have like a little religious service, and I never wanted to go. So I would make sure on the way that I would brush up against the nettle, and they would send me over to the nurse. Oh, my God. It was a little painful, but I got out of it. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. So the next question that we have is, um, what if somebody wanted more happiness? Is there a happy herb? Catnip works for cats. It does. It does. Uh, <laughs> Maline. Kitty crack. But Maline I also use for protection, but it's good for a happiness herb. Okay. It's got like a an upbeat scent to it. I can't really describe it other than being upbeat in the scent category. What okay. do you what do you think of hyacinth? I've told that that was a good one too. I like hyacinth. I like that for like opening up channels if you have any chakras blocked. That's a good one for that. Oh nice. Oh that's a good that's good to know. Yeah. I think I got a blockage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> what? Let Which that one? roll by. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to let that one just roll on by. <laughs> All right, you're up, Michelle. What if someone wanted to bring more courage into their life? More curry? Courage. courage. And I'm going to add confidence in that one, too. What about confidence? Courage. I would go with wormwood. Wormwood? Hmm. Wormwood, yeah. Confidence, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, especially for mediumship students. It's yeah. really good. What you got for confidence? Would you use wormwood or something different? Wormwood? I kind of like the wormwood for that, too. I'm not okay. being late, Thomas. It's just that they happen to be flowing with your question. Okay, that's cool. Well, these yeah. are all the questions that were submitted to me. So I think that, that we are that's we it. done with them? Yeah. So let's open up the floor. If anybody has any questions, um, do me a favor, hit in chat, and we'll un just say I have a question, and we'll unmute you. Or if anybody wants to make a comment, just let me know in chat, and we'll unmute you. What about clarity? Oh, you need that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> good for clarity. It's also good for finances. Oh, wait, which one? Oh, bay leaf, just oh. the whole bay leaf. Yeah, I've seen people use that for finances a lot, but they usually need a lot of clarity with that, so they use it for both. Like, they want to straighten out their finances. It's a good prosperity herb. Can I buy but that one in bulk? Yeah. Yeah, can you just get that at the grocery store? Yes. Oh, oh. oh so it's really just bay leaf. Yeah, I mean, I have customers that come in that buy herbs that they can get at the grocery store here because they want them from here. So I don't, I mean, I appreciate do that, but they, they like the witchy feel to it, I guess. Oh, you know, I've got a question for you while we're waiting to see if anybody else has any. Um, and we just got one, but let me ask this one first. 
Um, so when I'm teaching mediumship, I tell all my students that they better expect to go on firewalks. And, you know, what are firewalks? Firewalks are, um, if you think about an apartment building in New York where it's bricks, if you're, let's say, at level five consciousness, brick five, and you go to brick six, what worked for you at brick five is pretty much going to work at brick six. But if you go from five to 11, what worked for you on five is no way going to work for you in 11. So through chaos comes spiritual growth. Yes. Because if we, you know, if we're sitting here happy and content, we have no reason to stretch ourselves. So we're going to go on a firewalk, which means your life is going to feel like it's turned upside down. Now, I tell my students that you can really get through it much easier if you can figure out how to have faith and sit back and just be like a conscious observer and say, okay, just do what you got to do. And I'm just going to sit here and kind of watch. But what would be good herbs to help them through a firewalk? I think chamomile would be good for their tension to like calm them down to be clear enough to go through it. Um, so tea, you guys, tea. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh God, yes. <laughs> I depend on that for a sleepy time, but um, but it de-stresses you. So it's a good to go into something like that. You can't be all worked up and hyper. So even to carry a little bit with them, that would okay. be a good. Um, which is grass is another good one because that's kind of protective, but it's also getting into their spiritual self those are the two that come to mind for me okay and uh actually hold on i'm gonna unmute bridget and i'm gonna let her ask her own question okay because that's why we wanted to do this because we wanted to be more personal with everybody bridget you you have the floor honey yes um so i'm wondering you know with herbs that have um you know multiple uses and, and purposes is there something that you're that you should be doing to set your intentions with them or um, for each you know, for I, each use yeah um you know like some people have said like don't you know the cinnamon can cause like real lusty feelings but um you know says so somebody told me not to burn the cinnamon around the kids and and you know something like that but i'm like well if you're you said that there's other you know uses for them and and things like that or are these just like side effects to be aware of if you burn them does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah i do you want me to answer that one mm -hmm. yes that would yeah be cool. yeah all right <laughs> like with the stones when you're using the stones if something has multiple uses assigned to it <clears throat> excuse me you would hold it in your hands and just tell it which one of those attributes you want to like amplify in it Okay. okay, so if you're using the cinnamon for one thing, but the, you want to leave out the lusty, just like set your intentions. And I usually use that, do it with my hands or hold my yeah. hands for it. If there's a lot of it, you just like hold your hands right above the herb or the item that you're charging. Well, you know, I just figured out what my problem was when I was younger. I, I told you I'm a cinnamon freak. So, you know, <laughs> now we know what my problem was when I was younger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I, sh I should have been staying away from the cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Father swears and he's 83 years old and he carries it with him wherever he goes and these women follow him everywhere. Like the little blue pill. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. How about patience though? We didn't talk about one for patience. Oh, and tolerance. Yeah. Patience. Who's that directed to, Randy? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who is it directed to? Oh, nobody in particular. I'm asking you, because one, well, I asked because Randy needs some for patience and I need some for my children. So I would <laughs> Burbank is good and lavender. If you're using for the kids, um, I have parents come in here sometimes that want their kids to be able to sleep through the night. And I will use the lavender and the vervain mixed together and I'll put it in like a little drawstring bag for them mm -hmm. so they can under their pillow at night. 
Okay. I'll try that. It's probably cheaper than the Benadryl I slip up now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I swear I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll use Benadryl. You know? <laughs> okay, so with what's going on all around us right now, um, we have a lot of fear regarding COVID, which, you know, is kind of understandable for most people. And then we also have you know, social issues. So that's bringing up a lot of anger and resentment for a lot of people, which you see all over social media. So what is good for those two things? Go back to sage, any kind of sage. Uh, sage, it could be the white California sage. Um, geez, I wish I could go over and look at my wall. Uh, Buckwort would be good for that because that would like really smooth anything that was like anything full of anxiety. Hence, the mugwort is good for. Oh, can you send me a pound of that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, while you were answering that question, I thought to myself, how often should you use these? You know, um, these herbs daily, weekly. I mean, it depends. I use them as needed. Like if I have two that I'm working on then I'll use it. But if you have something that's going, you can put it in the morning, or like I said, you could carry it with you. Those little mesh bags with the drawstrings on them are excellent. Mm -hmm. Like the bag or the mesh ones, because you could actually squeeze them and smell them while you're going about your day. Okay. And it, and it also depends on what you're doing. Like when I was starting with mediumship, I mean, you know, we're going back a long ways, but um, I, I did the candles with cinnamon and clove every night when I meditated. Yeah. And um, that, that was repetitive for you. So you would use it every night. Yeah. Yep. And hold on. I'm going to unmute Colleen because she made a comment and we're going to let her have the floor. Well, I've always found that sage combined with cedar and rosemary, very calming and very protective yeah from other people's crap that's good i love the smell of cedar so that i bet you that would be a good combination oh. rosemary oh, is amazing yeah <laughs> put that on your list <laughs> i what do you think i'm writing I, gotta... I know that's why i said it i can see you writing <laughs> no right she onyx thinks i'm kidding i'm coming oh i'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm, come on i'll stay open <laughs> <laughs> She'll stay open tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Onyx is going to make a whole month's worth of, of whatever uh, just for me alone. <laughs> yep. How many, my husband always says to me, because I'm a dog groomer, of course, so he'll say, how many Yorkies is that going to cost me? Meaning how many Yorkies do I have to groom to, to pay for that? So how many Yorkies are we talking? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm going to try that combination. Thank you. You're and welcome. you better you better get a, a porcupine curl too. Oh, yes. you know what she said to me? You know what she said to me? What? The other day we we're talking and, and this one tells me, oh, you can have the quill. I want the whole porcupine. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, you sure do until you get up in the middle of the night and startle it and then tell me how that works for you. They're so cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So yeah, anybody start. else? <laughs> oh, we didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Start with the hedgehog before going in for the full porcupine before you I, decide okay. you want. Up. I knew you were saying that too. Yeah, I've, I've been told that. I see. <laughs> I'll start with the squirrels in my yard. That's actually where I'm starting. Okay, Tammy's coming in. I tried to do the chat and then it took my picture away. So I'm afraid to touch this thing. <laughs> no worries, honey. Anyways, two years ago, I. Of course, I was working in my garden. I was digging what I thought were weeds, and spirit says, "Stop! Don't do that." Okay, and I had to find out what was going on. And here I find that just about everything that grows in my yard. Okay, I look it up on the Native American medicine chart, and I dry it and all the other stuff. But just about everything in your lawn, in your woods, every, everywhere. Check it out first on that plant chat 
or plant snap yeah app there's or? yeah there's an app called um plant plant identifier or something like i have it on here you just take a picture of it tammy and it identifies it yeah you take a picture and then it ident it asks you if you want to uh, look at the leaf or the bark or the flower and then uh, oh. you can check it if it's flowering and you want to check the stem too you can do that you can put two different or three different pictures in that's really cool but, uh, yeah so i started drying all these herbs and everything now and i have a whole bunch of them but um it's just amazing and then i look it up on the native american and see what they do with it yeah it's uh it's plant snap and um hold on let me move this yep. window and it's this it's this little green one right here that looks kind of like a camera yep i guess Great. Um, yeah. and yeah, you can take pictures and it'll tell you what anything is when I'm walking in the woods and I have any questions. Um, cause you know, I don't want to get like poison ivy or anything. So <laughs> that's why I keep it. Mm -hmm. the day before yesterday, I was walking in the woods and I thought, oh, this looks interesting. It looks like a new little oak tree, right? So a picture and it's poison oak. So <laughs> I have to go away from the poison oak. Get back. That's exactly why I have it because I would be the one that would get it. I am highly, highly allergic to uh, poison ivy. This people would will burn it, and my eyes will swell shut. My face gets huge. Get Ugh. some jewelweed. Jewelweed grows amongst the poison ivy, though, so you have to like get it from a store or something. That's like, like a cruel trick. I know, isn't it? Jewelweed <laughs> is the antidote for the poison ivy. Oh, I will have to have some of that on hand. Right in with it. It's like all intermingled. It's wild. Oh. All right, that's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, what about eucalyptus? You should add some eucalyptus on your list. <laughs> right? Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Awesome. Uh, come on, Onyx. Tell her what else she needs on that list. <laughs> Some yarrow, um, let's see, wild lettuce. Wild <laughs> lettuce is actually good for paranormal stuff. It's really excellent. Yeah. To, yeah. Hmm. That's one I have not heard of or used in, in ghost hunting with, you know, with a team. Wild lettuce? Wild lettuce. Yeah. Hey. Huh. hey, what does it taste like? I like cake. I have no clue. I love cake too. <laughs> I'll have to look at the wild lettuce. Like I said, we usually, we definitely use the sage, you know, the California sage and, um, you know, the, the devil shoestring. Uh, so that's why I was curious about that answer. We use that one a lot too. But Can, yeah, love that one. Yeah. Can I just tell you that why I don't think wild lettuce belongs in cake? Oh no, I'm not eating that. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm just thinking. <laughs> no. I have a funny story about cake from the other night. My husband brought home cake for me because I love cake. It was gluten free, and I'm like, "What the hell is this? It tasted like a sponge." <laughs> so I just like ate the icing off of it. <laughs> Don't buy gluten free cake. And my <laughs> wife brings cake home, and I scrape the icing off and eat the cake. <laughs> <gasps> That's a sin. That's frosting. A sin. Yeah, a headache and a half. I can't have frosting. All right. Does no. anybody else have any questions or anything they would like to add? If not, we're we're gonna get ready to sign off. Yes, maybe. Fun. Well, this has been fun, and I'm really glad that we got so much participation, so many questions coming in. I was, I was very um, pleasantly surprised to see that because there was a lot of questions on there that I said, "Hmm, this is interesting." So I want to thank everybody. I want to thank those of you that, um, you know, came in and gave your time to participate. And um, before we say good night, I'd like to remind everybody that if you got value from the content, we encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell. You can stay informed on our content. Um, if you feel that anybody else would find value, please feel free to share with them. And um, 
for Onyx. Onyx, I will put your card up, but would you also like to verbally give you the shop info? Sure. We're at Strange Brew at 2703 Elmwood Avenue, Kenmore, New York, 14217. Our phone number is 716-871-0282. You can find us on Facebook or on the internet at www.strangebrew13.com. If you want to keep on top of workshops, I will be doing a three-day mediumship online workshop later this year. I'll also be doing one on animal communication later in the year. So they're not up yet, but the website is crackingthespiritualcode.com. If you keep an eye on that, you'll be able to see. I'll also be teaching at Onyx's um, place at Strange Brew next year, which we're talking what mid <clears throat> mid July, Onyx. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and I'll also put that information up on the video when it posts. But I'm the reason I asked if you want to do verbally is because I want to be sensitive because I had gotten some feedback that you know what some people they they watch these not to watch them because they're blind but they listen and this way you know i want to be sensitive um so that everybody can get what they need as best we can so if there's anything that we're missing please point it out to us because i i don't think of everything and i i don't pretend to mm -hmm. and with that i think that we will say good night to everybody